Hello and praise the Lord, my general viewers around the world. Welcome to our online monthly reflections and worship at home for January 29th, 2023. Somebody asked the other day, when should the greetings for the new year come to an end? <laughs> well, I suppose those asking the same questions should provide us with answers as to when the greetings for this year should come to an end. Because when we ash in January, we ash in January with the inspiration and we declare it as part of the year of the Lord. And still also the same, we conclude January and enter now as we enter February. We declare February as a month of the Lord. And may the Lord meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. Before we reflect, I think it's good to do justice to our meeting by gracing it with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we want to bring to your attention those experiencing violence, those experiencing war around the world, those experiencing pain, illness, those admitted in hospitals awaiting prescriptions, awaiting medical procedures or to receive medical results. Pray for those who are nearing the end of their lives in hospitals, home cares and hospices. God, encamp them with your love. May the warmth of your peace be with them now. We pray for those who suffer silently, whose voices are silenced for speaking out against injustices. We pray for persecutors and perpetrators of injustices that will come into light of the gospel of Jesus. We pray for those who receive bribes, those leading through corruptions, those doing the work of God, through spiritual manipulations of ministerial gifts. Lord, bring them to a point of repentance and acknowledge you and provide your wise counsel free of church. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Micah the prophet is considered as one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. Remember there are five books that we refer as major prophets in the Old Testament beginning with Isaiah. You name the rest. And there are 12 minor prophets where Micah belongs to that category. It is said that Mika lived between 720 to 750 BCE and his ministry lasted for about 50 years during this period as he was called to prophesy for Israel and Samaria which is part of the north and the south of Israel. In this particular period of time, Mika, the world, the politics of the day, the spiritual leaders of the day were full of violence, perpetrating injustices. And Mika is called as a man, a called of God, anointed for this specific purpose. Because I believe there, is, there are seasons that God raises men and women with a particular specialized ministry to address specific social problems around the world. Mecca, according to Micah chapter 3, verses 11, I quote, The rulers who govern, govern for bribes. The priest who interpret the law of God do it for a pay. And the prophets 
who give out revelations, they give it for payment. Here is what the Lord is saying. Return to me. Do justice, love mercy, and walk righteously and humbly before me. And of God. Prophet Mika paints a picture to his readers of the political leader's nature of oppressing the weak and silencing the voiceless through taking bribes and treating them unjustly. Mika paints a picture of priests and teachers of the law of God who misinterpreted the scriptures to suit their own hearers for the purpose of enriching themselves. Prophet Mick criticizes the prophets who rose up to cheat on rulers and kings and give them false messages of hope that the Lord, in quote, is with you and there is no harm which shall come, in quote, here, and the Lord's presence, in quote, is with you. Mika rises up into the occasion to challenge these injustices, whereby spiritual leaders use their ministerial gift for personal gain. Prophet of God Mika rises to challenge these injustices. As men and women of God slept in the same bed with the political leaders, so there was no one really in the society then to rise up, to condemn, to challenge leaders for injustices and wrong actions against the weak and against the voiceless. If Mika was living today in our present society, will his message, his prophetic declaration be of any relevant? In your context, are there injustices? Are there violence taking place? Are there persecution taking place? Are there people who are being silenced for rising against the evil of the day? Are there those who are murdered, losing their lives for the sake of challenging their wickedness in our society? I believe if Mika was living today, perhaps he might be one of the only one standing up, maybe including myself and including others of the like-minded, challenging the evils of our day. God is calling us. Mika brings a message of hope to the people of the north and the people of the south of Israel, telling them God is calling them for reconciliation with their neighbors and treating everybody justly and using the right measures and providing services, especially those already funded by state. They shouldn't demand bribes. And that's what God is asking of you, asking of us, never to take occasion and abuse our position of leadership to enrich ourselves and look for men and women in the name of anointing to bless our own deeds. And that's it. Like what is happening across the world, rulers who govern political affairs, they have people around them in the name of men and servants of God who proclaim messages of peace and messages of hope to them that their, their, their leadership is safe, their positions is protected. They cheat them. When people are crying below in the underground, when people are crying, crying in the background, they're telling me everything is fine when nothing really is good. And these prophets and priests, they cheat these leaders, bring fattling, bring, bring offerings and God will accept you. 
And we see this in Micah chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. Where the people are saying, can we bring fat offering? Can we bring ten thousands of rams? Can we bring ten thousands of oil? You have a hand of instances where people sell anointing oil for money, for blessings. It is happening during the period of Micah. Can we bring anointing oil? Can we bring thousands of liters of this oil for our sins to be covered? No really being forgiven. And God says to Micah, I have called you for three particular tasks. One task is call people for justice, call people for loving mercy, and call people for walking humbly before God. Humility is one of the key theme cutting across the entire Bible. No wonder the Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles 7 14, He, my people, called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Will I not, Lord, from heaven hear and bring an healing to their land? Our Lord today, speak the same message to Micah and many of the Micah like in mind in our society today to speak to our society around us. When you see evil, taking place speak out speak out constructively don't speak out against evil in a way you expose yourself in danger speak it in a constructive way when people prostitute laws legislations for their personal gain Find out ways of challenging some of these laws which are being manipulated. Look for just lawyers, honest people to help you interpret some of these legislations being prostituted for personal gain. Speak out, even when it means you are the one speaking alone against the evils of our day. At the end of the day, you're not the only one. In the history, there have stood men and women who have stood tall against evils and represented God in their time, in their age. God is calling us for three tasks. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before God. I want to acknowledge that God is calling us, not just for big fat offering, when our ways with one another, when our ways with our neighbors are really not good. If the relationship are really bad with those that we live with, with those that we work with, with those that we worship with, if the relationship is not good, stop the offering, put it before the door, go shake hands with those that you're quarreling with, those that you're disagreeing with. Reconcile, find a way of mending up the relationship. Because you can't go before God, lift up your hands and begin to worship God. The person who is being persecuted, the person who has been, been really humiliated and abused also stands before God. As you're worshiping, he is also, she is also worshiping. And perhaps looking at how hypocritical you're raising your hand and raising up your voices and calling yourself a righteous person. It's mockery. It's a shameful act. And God is saying, turn around. Mend your ways. Walk justly with God and the fellow person that you see. And the God that you don't see with your eyes. Or see that your relationships are good with a person that you can, don't see. And God will accept your gift. Today, God is calling us to stand tall, humbly, by accepting our mistakes and how we treat and mistreat our people. Don't you ever mistreat anyone. Don't ever mistreat anyone as simply because they have spoken against your evils. You could rather 
humbly move and go and approach the person. Please could I know more about these things of accusation that she was bringing against me. And what can I do to amend them? Because we're in the same journey, pilgrim to the kingdom of God. I pray today that the message of Micah to walk justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before God, to convict your heart and remind yourselves and have a new, brand new walk with God. There's no loss. You have not lost. But you will lose if you keep on fighting, persecuting, all those rising up to challenge your wicked ways. I admire the work of the compassionate charity organizations who help people, people they do not know, people they have no clue who they are, but send money across the world to transform lives of someone. Be merciful, love mercy, help where you can. Do it justly. Help not expecting a return. God bless you and I thank you sincerely for being here to listen to such a message and I challenge you. Share this video widely. Let somebody else hear this message. Don't listen to this message alone. Share this video widely. So that those who are doing evil, injustice, violating people's right, left and center, silencing those who are standing up to speak about their right and to speak about the wrong in the society, will hear God speaking to them and God can speak to them in a different way. If you are a prophet, a servant of God, you're being misused or used by leaders, rulers across the world, politicians, to bless their wicked way and to sleep in the same bed with them. It's time has come to turn around and repent and seek God's ways. That's the only way you can be blessed. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and you know very well. I look forward always to sharing another message of hope in the next episode. The Lord bless you and I wish you a fantastic, blessed, fruitful, prosperous month of February. Amen to the glory of God.